Welcome to the School of Wordcraft and Wordmancy. This is Feedback Frenzy. Hello, welcome everyone to a Submit Saturday review where we are going to critique an article that has been submitted. If you too would like to have an article submitted, please visit wgc.bz slash submit and your article can be critiqued and reviewed, reviewed in a future Saturday. The article we're going to review now is The Black-Haired Dog by Barbarossa Sparklebeard. Okay, so, all right, let's just, interesting, let's just take a look at the article. We'll just get the overview and first impressions. Okay, The Tavern Challenge 2022. Does this mean that this was the winner? Is that what that means? Nice. All right. Ooh, lots of text. Okay. I've already liked this, but that that does not remove it from consideration. Even if I've liked an article before, if you've submitted it before and you would like me to reread it, I will reread it. Don't keep submitting the same article like a million times. I'd rather get a wide understanding of your world, but yeah. It's okay to resubmit after you've received feedback. Okay, taverns. Okay, so founding date. Okay, it looks like we got some three-column headers, or more like major column, that double column. Okay, architecture, food and drink, history, Hemet's Rest. Oh, I, I think I remember this. Okay, entry for the tavern challenge. Okay. Uh, the header here may not apply to the, um, article, but it may apply to the world at large. Uh, so that's interesting. I'm glad that it's only taking up half of my screen instead of the whole screen, but uh, I really think it's important that you can see the header when you load the screen. So, okay, now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. The, the layout is nice. It is dense. There's a lot of text here. Good use of the orange things to do some uh, lore stuff. Good thing this pub menu looks excellent. So let's zoom in a little bit so you and I can read together. Control. Preferably to the point where it becomes a single column. Not everyone reads stuff at 200%, but you know what? Maybe you do. Ghostfire Gaming. Is this like the winner? I, I don't know. Okay, I'm not seeing a lot of links to other articles. So no, I don't see a lot. Okay, there's a tooltip. Okay. Okay. I may be unique, but I love a lot of tooltips because that's it's an invitation for you to explore the world more. Because if you have tooltips, people say, ooh, like that. It's the rabbit hole effect. And if you want people to do that, then you can do it. It was the winner, yes. I have to critique a winner. The Black-Haired Dog Public House, also known as the St. Lawson's Brewing Company and colloquially known as Hermit's Rest, is a pub located in the modern capital of Rathen. Rathen. Originally built as a monastery, it was turned into a public house after a series of disasters led its parishioners to sell the building rather than become debtors. The black-haired dog has been serving patrons of all walks over 800 years. Making it the oldest pub in Adras. The tavern tavern's normal clientele is mainly working class people, but bring, being at the heart of Rathan, it can also expect nobles, bishops from the cathedral, travelers, and more. As a rule, the black-haired dog cannot deny any person in need. This rule is widely enforced and has been and has been since it opened by Osmond Mrenar centuries ago. 
the black-haired dog is considered a national landmark by many people. Okay, now if there was a, an, okay, the opening paragraph, the hook of the article, it gives a really good, rich, and clear definition, uh, summary of what we're going to be learning about. We see the three names of the articles. We see how long has it been opening. We see who comes, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Okay, we see a lot of different things. And then this nice, sweet little nugget, it's a national landmark. You say, why is it important that you read this? Because this is a landmark. This has history. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have, a, you know, the patrons. Uh, personal preference. I probably would have taken the second two lines into a separate paragraph my, because this is a different concept because this is this this is the this is the patrons and this is a rule but you could you could justify that this is a this is talking about the patrons because even the even those in need can receive sustenance or support from that so yeah depending on how you define your concept that you're covering in that paragraph yeah that could fit in the early 600s proselytizers of the rapidly growing driistic faith began establishing religious centers throughout the northern adruzi basin in an attempt to convert the native inhabitants of the region Lao Xuan, a new convert, took it upon himself to spread the faith with intense vigor and began traveling around across the basin. Sprinters take five. March is only 15 more. In 637, Lao Xuan traveled to the southern region of the basin and discovered a wellspring bubbling from a broken stone on top of a low hill. Believing it to be a sign from the gods, he began construct the he began construction of a small home. Eventually, it became known as Lawson's Wellspring and Tabernacle, and he began holding church services weekly. In 679, Lawson, along with his lifelong dire hound companion, Hermit, was buried beneath the cairn of, a cairn of stones on the church grounds after their death. Following his passing, the chapel was willed to two of Lawson's acolytes. By this time, the building had become a notable stop for many travelers and merchants. The priest's living quarters had already been converted into a makeshift hospice and sleeping quarters for such people. Oftentimes, priests were forced to sleep on the floor or in pews with blankets because of the sheer number of visitors. Okay, and then we get this thing here. So let's just take it, making sure. Okay. All right, so we now we have to make the flow work at the level, you know, the normal level of Zoom. I can understand why it was in there. But, you know, when zooming in, it. Let's take a, let's take a quick break. Lawson and Hetmet. Sometime after building his chapel, Lawson was interrupted from his nightly prayer by strange noises outside. Curious, Lawson went to investigate with nothing but his shepherd's staff and a lantern. After wandering for a while, he perceived he stumbled upon a form of a large, dead dire hound. Her side had been pierced by arrows and her breathing had stopped. Behind her, a small, pure black puppy lay whining as it nudged her dead form with great tenacity. Saddened by the sight, Lawson took the pup back to the chapel and named him Hetmet, meaning Little Loyal One. For thirty years, the two would become inseparable and become a common sight for travelers and merchants alike. Hetmet would eventually pass away from old age. Lawson buried him behind the church beneath a small cairn of stones. Lawson, broken-hearted, would pass only four days later. I'm not crying. You're crying. 
Tavern and Staff. Okay, see, that's just a wonderful hook. That is really good. You know, because we talk about we talk about hooks for our articles. This really this really doesn't have a hook like we had we talked about with the other articles of a quote or of a story or something like this. In this, the story is in the early history. It is the and it, it belongs here. It's a great story. It could be a great hook, but it belongs where it is. It would not, I don't know if it would work well up, up top. It could, but I don't know. Okay, so the interesting thing here, uh, now we come to the staff. Okay, I'm not going to pre pretend to be able to pronounce these names. The head chef of the black-haired dog. I need to figure out how some become shiners and others become titans. Don't know. The head chief uh, of the black haired dog, the head chef of the black haired dog. At 45 years, Odakim is a tall, tan skinned man. Hey, Barbarossa, you made it. Uh, short salt. Uh, short cut salt pepper hair with a full beard. He appreciates everyone who frequents the bar and isn't afraid to give out occasional the occasional meal. The hostess of the black haired dog, Adana, is noted for her stunning blonde hair and fair skin. She is pl a pleasant soul. Time who for the sprinters to get back to work. Enter. The fifteen year old child of Odakim and Adana Renar. She works as a server and backup cook of the black-haired dog. Much like her father, she is a bold and determined person who loves her family. Oscar. The 13-year-old child of, of Odakim and Adana Mrenner, he works as a server and helps clean tables of, of the black-haired dog. Oscar, while he loves his family, has dreams to join the military and serve for life as soon as he becomes 16. The 12-year-old child of Odakim and Adana Mrenner, Oswig, he works as a cleaner and dishwasher of the black-haired dog, an excitable child. He often likes to pull pranks on customers. Okay, so an interesting thing here. For the parents, you say, he, you, you repeat the name here, at 45 years, Odakim is tall. Here you go, Adana is noted. But then here you go, she works. He works. He becomes. So it's an interesting change that you had there for the children where you're not repeating uh, their Jania, Oscar, or Oswig in the paragraph where you did. If you wanted to be parallel, you know, have pure parallelism, you could do that. Um, it was just, the, the, the question is more, is this a header or is this part of a sentence? Because if the, and I know this is a winning article and so I do not want you to change anything because it, of you won, don't change it, but just for thoughts. Okay, because um, here this is a this is a whole standalone paragraph. This is a standalone paragraph. These could be great headers. These you need the information in here. So this is a sentence. This needs to be part of the sentence for it to make sense. So I guess in these sidebars that you have when you're listing people, one should make the decision: Are they headers? that have a full, complete paragraph afterwards? Or are they parts of the sentence? And you've gone both routes here. So if it's sentence, if I, just to nitpick, if it was a sentence, I would leave it, have you have it. But if it was to be a subheader, 
I would probably move it up a little bit for, but that could mess out layout but, and stuff like that. So that was just the, 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 the nittest of picks. Okay, back to the headers, uh, the history. Just a second. Okay. It did mess up the layout when I tried it as a header. Okay. Sometimes you have to do that then. For the next 200 years, people would come from all across the southern basin to visit and drink from the supposedly holy waters of Lawson's Wellspring. Legends speculated the waters held healing qualities that could cure ailments and disease as well as grant vigor and strength of the lame. At some point in the 700s, the village of Rathan was formed around the church. When the chapel was experiencing steady funds and support in the early 800s, the local parishioners decided to build construction of a basement brewery utilizing the wellspring. However, tragedy struck when the new brewing equipment failed, causing the foundations to become too weak to support the surface structures. The building sagged, and the church bell tower collapsed, leading to a re reconstruction of the entire foundation. Disaster struck again soon after when lightning ignited the thatch root roof during a violent autumn storm and a fire destroyed much of the church's interior. With the coffers empty and no means to make income, the parishioners were forced to close the church and sell the property. A local miller and layman of the faith named Osmond Morenar offered to purchase the building so he could restore it as a public house. The parishioners, with very few options, accepted with two stipulations. One, the public house could not deny anyone a need. and Two, they must care for and maintain the grave of Lawson and Hetmet, which remained the only grave on the property. Murner accepted and accepted and the deal was struck. The parishioners moved into a new building, which they converted into a church with the money they received. Renner reopened the building as the Black-Haired Dog Public House in 852. Following the troubled times of the 12th century, early historians were offered jobs of by nobility to scour archives, libraries, and churches to find documentation and records to prove their legitimate right to rule. Did they just make it up if they couldn't find it? Two historians arrived at the black-haired dog public house, believing it was still a chapel. During their stay, they were informed of the story of Lausin and Hetmet, which had grown into a popular folk legend throughout the southern Adrazil Basin. Intrigued, the two recorded the story in writing. Later, it was published in a series of short stories and pamphlets called Adras, Its History and People. These pamphlets revitalized commerce in the area as people from across the basin flocked to visit. I'm glad that you have this, this header, this tooltip here. I'm a fan of the tooltips. Uh, I really like how you have an explanation for how it became popular and well-known. These two traveling historians, great touch. Uh... You could have that be a part. I, I made the joke of if they don't find documentation, they just make it up. Yeah, I, I'm sure that happens somewhere. You remember the, the first, is it First Night? The movie First Night that has Heath Ledger as... Uh, a, pr uh, a knight who fakes his nobility, and at the end, uh, Prince John, the Black Knight, says, oh, my scholars found that he is of royal birth, blood, or royal birth. And I'm going, really? Really? Okay. <laughs> but of course, they had to at least pretend they were looking things up. Ah. Uh. A Knight's Tale. Thank you, Siobhan. Yes. I liked that one. I liked A Knight's Tale. Um, but then again, it 
it's where I was introduced to Jarvis from the MCU. Oh. Yeah. Heath Ledger, a man taken before his time. By the 15th century, Rathen had grown into a large city that acted as a trading point between the port cities on the Cerulean Sea and the Basin Interior. Around this time, officials celebrated the con- completion of the Rathen Cathedral by canonizing Laosen posthumously as the official saint of the city. Yes, it's po- posthumously. Posthumously, not posthumously. Just, anyway. Paul Bettany, thank you. I like Paul Bettany. I really liked Wanda and Vision. Wanda Vision. I just... I hope he I hope he can stay in the MCU. Anyway, Lawson became known as Saint Lawson, the Saint of Protection Charity, Brewing, and Dire Wolf Hounds. Many locals criticized the church for not includes, including Hetmet in the canonization of Lawson. Two years after the initial canonization, officials gave into local pressure and named Hetmet the Dire Wolf. Saint of Friendship and Joy. In 1653, the Black Hair Dog celebrated its 800th year of business. To celebrate, the newly found kingdom of Adras registered the building as a historical site and began granting them a monthly stipend to help fund the pub. You know, us Americans can't appreciate 800th year of business. I know there are some many wonderful places across the UK and European Union where they have 800-year-old businesses. I mean, 180 years Sprinters ago... Sprinters and marchers, time is up. This was a desert. 180 years ago in Europe it was still thriving. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just really... You know, I love the... I love the long history of this, but, you know, as an American, I truly can't appreciate visiting and seeing something that was, wow, that is 800 years old. Caves don't count. Arches and Grand Canyon and those things don't count because humans didn't make those. Make those. Architecture. The Black Haired Dog Public House is, is a two-story building. Its first floor exterior is made of light gray limestone with dark wood widow, window frames and doors. A stone wall surrounds an open lot to the right side of it, which holds two tables, a couple chairs, and a small colorful cairn of stones with two small wooden statuettes of a dog and man on top. The second floor is alabaster white, coated in wattle and daub, and, dec- <clears throat> and decorated with dark wood half-timbers. The roof is covered in slate shingles with a tall, stony chimney. Inside, the stone wall is insulated with wicker and covered in plaster and stucco. The walls are painted a warm, dark yellow and show depictions of a saint, a group of direwolves, and rolling hills. Paint. <coughs> I, I apologize. I hope I have a voice tomorrow night. <sighs> Paintings of the countryside also cover the walls, showing the landscape before the city of Rathan surrounded, surrounded it. The first floor wi- windows only face the street are made of stain. On- the first floor windows only face the street are made of stained glass. The windows depict black direwolves in various poses. The tables, chairs, and even the bar are made of dark wood with brass fixtures, lit by wrought iron and brass gas lamps. I may have added a few more. Oh no. A large scale kitchen and bathroom are found towards the back along with twin staircases going up and down, which are locked during business hours. The only rule is you can't do... I won't do two in a row. Okay? That's... I think 
that should be my only rule. And maybe only two, I don't know. I don't want to make any more rules that I'll break. The basement is small compared to the overall structure, possessing a barrel cellar and, a, and large brewing equipment which pumps water from the wellspring to turn into fine ale. The second floor, which is only accessible by the Renner family normally, possesses a bathroom, a kitchenette, a living area with windows pointed to the street, and two bedrooms. Rugrat. Food and drink. I'm going to skip that. Uh, the food stuff of the black-haired dog is made fresh, made of fresh local ingredients purchased from sellers at the nearby Market Square. Prices are set so all walks of life can afford to eat here, with some specialty items placed on the menu to attract wealthier, more influential clientele, such as nobility, bishops, etc., while many items have been added and removed, the only food item which has remained on the menu since the tavern opened is Adrasel goulash, a popular dish well known for the region. It is a form of beef stew that mixes vegetables, rice, and various seasonings in a rice, a rich bone broth that is commonly served in a wooden bowl and large garlic or large garlic bread bowl. Is it lunchtime yet? As for its drinks, the house liquor is the Aden River Ale, which actually does not get its water from the nearby Aden River, but from the naturally pure spring water underneath the bar. The ale is noted to have a strong honey apple taste to it, as well as having a fruity aroma. Sprinters when, and marchers, let's go. When poured, it shows as a dark golden color with a foamy head. Aden River Ale has been served at the bar almost unchanged since the brewery opened 800 years ago. All breads, including the bread bowls, are cooked in-house using a large wood-burning bread oven. Most breads are made in the morning, made the morning of, and kept in an ice box for two days before given to the local homeless or needy for free. This way, no food is wasted. All the, all the food preparation is done by Otakim Mrenar, who, is, who has owned the bar since inheriting it 20 years ago from his father. Otakim places pride in his work and carefully prepares every dish with remarkable speed while his eldest daughter assists in day-to-day -day operations such as kitchen and food preparations. Yeah, uh, Rugrat, that, that is a really good point. Make... I would rather provide the feedback for an article that you're still working on. I'm really enjoying this read here of Barbarossa's stuff, but I would, I think I would give different deference to, a uh, preference to those that are still in some form of draft. Emmett's Rest is a large cairn of stones which sit, sit on the corner of the beer garden, furthest from the bar or garden entrance. It stands a little over five feet high and is made of, with, made of with colorful stones painted in a myriad of colors and decorated with depictions of dogs, dog paws, and more. On the top stone rests two statuettes, one of a man with a shepherd's staff and the other of a large dire, dire wolf that have been mortared to the stone. At the base, various religious symbols have been drawn, as well as thrown coins and seeds, and chalk drawings of wishes, prayers, and more. Occasionally, someone will drape the cairn in the national flag. This is the final resting place of Lawson and Hetmet, laid together after their deaths, so their friendship would remain ever, even into the afterlife. Many people flock to this pub to pay respects as well as to perform the prayer ritual. When performing, one must first donate something to the cairn. This can be a stone, coin, seeds, or other material object. Once this is done, the person will kneel before the cairn and pray. According to the legend, the prayer must be 
a sincere want, and not just something monetary or selfish. Then once you are finished, you write what you want on the ground near the cairn and walk away. This ritual has been performed for over 400 years since the publication of Adras, its history and people, which made the site popular. All coins donated to the site are considered donations to help the bar feed homeless people. Yes, this is a wonderful article, well-deserved win, and a lot of good information, and yeah, well done. So thank you, uh, Barbarossa Sparklebeard, for sharing that article with me. If you, if you, dear watcher, viewer, or visitor, would like to have your article read, please visit wgc.bz slash submit, where we will be able to talk about your article as well. Like. Thanks for watching this Feedback Frenzy. Be sure to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Writer Greg offers coaching sessions to help bring your world to life, create compelling stories, and accomplish your creative goals. Please visit wgc.bz coaching for more details.